One of the things we want to talk about is the uh, use of eyewitness testimony and the failures that have come up using uh, eyewitness testimony. So I think this is very important. If you notice, as far as causes, uh, looking at the 239 DNA exonerations through uh, the Innocence Project, they said uh, eyewitness misidentification, which is to say just mistakes by eyewitnesses, uh, amount to about 75% of all of the wrongful convictions. Uh, also important to look at some other things, uh, issues with forensic science, for example, there used to be some procedures with hair that they used for a long time and just swore by it and said, oh yeah, that's great. Well, it turned out it, wasn't, it didn't even work. It was just uh, kind of a uh, witch doctor science. Uh, false confessions, a lot of times confessions uh, get sweated out of guys, not necessarily beaten out of guys, but uh, they've actually confessed to things they didn't do just because they couldn't stand the pressure. Also, uh, false informant testimony, about 12% of the times. A lot of times those guys are motivated, it could be gang oriented, uh, take the heat off of another gang member, or it could be uh, issues with uh, getting even with somebody, jealousy, boyfriend, girlfriend issues, a number of things where informants falsely accuse somebody. Uh, in many cases, the informant is actually the wrongdoer. Uh, one case called An Innocent Man, John Grisham wrote a book about it, a uh, terrible situation where the actual informant actually killed the girl and an innocent man went to death row, fortunately got off, but then he didn't live very long after he was released, after the Innocence Project uh, got him off death row. So these are just some examples, these are some things we want to share with you.